Hi, everyone. Uh, so we've got uh, Stephen Kitsoff um, on for uh, use today. Uh, I'm trying to find Cheslin, so I'll bring him next. So we'll, you've got uh, Stephen for about five minutes or so all on his own, and then we'll bring in uh, Cheslin after that. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, Kaniso. Uh, I... Can you see me today? Well, someone else can ask, it's fine. I've asked, I asked in the earlier okay. conference. Okay, Ken? How's it, Stephen? Um, How's it, Ken? Hard lines there. Um, <clears throat> Stephen, it seemed that you guys weren't really able to put the All Black Scrum or line out under much pressure um, tonight, today. Um, just how, how vital was that in the result? No, uh, it was. I, I felt, uh, especially scrum time, first first half was uh, was a big battle, um, and we got some ascendancy towards the back end of the first half, and starting of the second half, and then uh, conceded two scrum penalties towards the end. But um, we know, like the, the All Blacks is one of the best teams in the world, and and they pride themselves on their on the way they attack, but also with good attack, you need a, a great set piece. So. Uh, um, a lot of credit to them. Um, I think there's a lot of learnings for us, especially when it comes to set piece defense um, and and the way we execute our own ball. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was a tough tough game when it comes to set piece. Uh, Nathan, cool. How's it, Kitsi? Um, Kitsi, um, we know the what was our halftime chat? Halftime chat. But, um, we know the guys that came on immediately after after halftime and the guys who played in the first game against Australia. Um, so can you just give us a, a recap on, on what is a halftime chat? Um, you know, it was all about physicality and, and actually getting a bit of dominance uh, when it comes to the collisions. Um, I felt or uh, spoken about uh, conceding meters uh, in the way we tackled. We couldn't manage to slow the ball down. Um, I think it was a big step up in the second half in the way we stopped momentum and put them under pressure. But uh, yeah, that was that was mainly the big part of of, of the halftime chat. Uh, so Nele? Uh Stephen, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. In the previous press, I couldn't be heard. Okay, so. Um... The question that I wanted to ask you, like, we know what the world rankings say uh, when it comes to Ireland and France, but uh, in our opinion and in the opinion of many people around the world, South Africa and New Zealand are the top two sides in the world. Now, we normally ask coaches this question, and I would like to pose it to you this time around. For you guys, the pressure, the intensity, uh, the fire that you experience on the field when you're playing the All Blacks, what does that do for you as a player, for you guys as players on the field? How does that help you now going forward, especially as we go to the World Cup? Yeah, I think as I said uh, previously, there was a lot of uh, learnings from this game. I think we had a very bad start. Uh, conceded quick, uh, quick 17 points uh, in the first 20 minutes. So I think it was... Something for us to to look at is is just getting a better start and making sure we not go so far behind that it's almost impossible to play catch up rugby. So I think for us it's it's looking at our structures, making sure we get our our, our stuff in in place, and making sure we actually get that good start, especially when it comes to the top five teams in the world. So because um, team structures are so good, like defensively, attack wise, uh, set piece. Uh, you can't afford to to go down um, 20 odd points and and expect to to fight your way back. But I'm still proud of the way that we did keep on fighting until the end. Uh, we'll take uh, three more questions from Stephen, and then we've got Grant coming on, who's embargoed for Sunday, guys. Uh, Hendrik, Ashfak, and Stephen. And uh, if I can ask, please keep the questions fairly short because we've got to we've got to head off to the bus soon. Stephen, uh, your thoughts on the free for all at the breakdowns? <laughs> Um, yeah, it was a it was a bit of a mess. Um, yeah, we we did look at it uh, in the prep during the week, and we we knew that even if you watch the the All Blacks uh, Argentina game, you could see there's a lot of pressure when it came to breakdown. 
but uh, yeah, it's something we'll have to definitely work on um, to create a bit of quicker and, and cleaner ball for our nines uh, to attack from. But uh, yeah, it was a bit of a free for all. Um, yeah, and for us, it's just controlling the controllables in those scenarios. Ashfab? Uh, I could see, uh, you know, it's a bit soon now after the game, but, uh, uh, you know, so there's obvious disappointment, but looking further ahead now, is it almost like a, a necessary wake-up call? I know it's so early in the season, but, you know, there's such good vibes after the, the win over the Wallabies and the performance that maybe some fans got carried away, but then this sort of brings you down to earth to sort of understand that there's so much more work to be done before you get to the World Cup where you need to be at your absolute best. Yeah, it's, it always feels like when you when you lose a game, it's the the words you use is a wake up call. But uh, for us, it's is we trying to play a, a certain style and a certain brand uh, that we worked on during the whole preseason uh, building up in Pretoria. Um, and I just think um, if we could control those those early tries and and actually um, didn't make as many necessary errors. Um, I think it would have been a different game, but uh, yeah, it is. It is a bit of a wake-up call, and we understand um, Australia was was a tough match, but went away towards. Um, I think it was maybe altitude, or I don't know what what the reason was, but uh, we knew coming to New Zealand, uh, playing against a a very strong All Black team, it, it's going to be a tough one. Okay, and then uh, Steven. Thanks, Z. I'd like Steve. Um, Steve, if you obviously you could meet the All Blacks again this year, if it happens, it will be at the World Cup. And what would you be able to do to um, stop that initial tempo of theirs? Be because you know they, it's, it's just in their character um, that they've got that incredible tempo that they can play with um, at stages, and they really brought it in the early stages yeah. of that match. So, so how can one stop that? Um. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, a lot of things stopped for them in the first 20 minutes. Uh, a couple of offloads and, and the way that they played a bit of pop touch. Um, it, it felt like it stuck and we just were chasing ghosts for, for 20 minutes. Um, I think when, especially when the Springboks make a dominant tackle and actually get them on the ground, um, there's opportunity for us to realign our defense system and, and actually start putting uh, line, speed and break, uh, line speed and tackle pressure back onto them. But uh, I just felt they, the offload stuck, um, the way they just moved the ball, uh, everything stuck for them, and, and they actually played an incredible uh, opening opening passage of the game and, and actually scored a couple of good tries from it. But um, it's something we'll have to look at and see, um, especially building up to that test in Twickenham, um, where we can actually find solutions and, and actually try and slow their ball down and make it a bit more difficult for them to to play with that extremely high tempo. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thanks, Ella.